Okay everybody, tonight let's walk through setting up a uh, server-side trace. Sounds like fun, right? Let's open up Profiler to get us started. Um, now the, uh, the difference, by the way, I guess we should talk about what is a server-side trace. Anytime you open up Profiler and connect and do your definitions and run the trace, that is a client-side trace. Even if you open up Profiler on the server, and run it on the server, it's still a client-side trace. In order to do a server-side trace, um, you need to actually have the script um, and run the script. Uh, and we'll, that's what we're going to do today. Now, you, you have a smaller footprint, footprint basically, uh, when you run a server-side trace. It's not doesn't pull, put as much of a drag um, on the server as running it from the client side. So it's so a thing that you always want to do. Well, you want to do whenever you run a trace. Sorry. It really is almost midnight. Okay, um, so we're going to set up our thing. Um, we'll just call it server-side trace. Be picky about that. We'll click save to file. And we'll pick something random like D SQL server-side trace. And um, we'll go ahead and enable stop time because that can be fun. We don't want to let this run and then forget about it. I'm going to change that to 25 megabytes maximum file size because five seems a little small if you've got uh, a whole lot of activity going on. Let's go to event selection. That was our general properties tab. Um, oh, and just real quick, you can select uh, different templates, um, but I'll leave, you, leave that to you or for another video to explore all of those. Uh, for today, we'll go over and pick a manually. Say, I don't want my batch starting times in general. Um, but I do want to grab a couple other things for today. I want to grab my deadlock graphs because um, we'll just say that I've been having problems with deadlocks. We'll pretend today and scroll all the way down here and say SP statement completed and we've already got batch completed. That'll do for now for tonight. Uh, again, picking different events, something we'll go over another time. Right now we're just trying to get this going. We'll hit run. I'll go ahead and hit stop right away because I don't want to run this again from Profiler. Um, but this is an easy way to get uh, your um, uh, your server-side trace scripted. Go down to File, Export, Script Trace Definition, and I'm going to select for SQL, uh, SQL Server 05 to 08. And we'll save that. Uh, server side trace. Um, I'll say server side trace script. Um, yay! You want to be more descriptive than that. All right, so that does it for profiler. Shut that down. Let's go over here to Management Studio. Uh, open our file up. S server. Oh heck! Let's just do that. That's right. I said oh heck. What are we gonna do about it? All right, so we've got this great little um, file. Let's take a look at it real quick. Uh, I've got some variables. We've got date time. I'm not sure why it does that. Date time is actually our end time, and just for uh, the the stop time, I mean. And just for the fun of it, I'm going to go through and replace that. But you know, you don't have to. I just like things to be clear. Okay, so our stop time, and this is our, our script file, so we can go and we can change this. I actually want this to end uh, tomorrow at 1 in the morning. Yeah, that's it. And I'm going to change my max file size to 20 because I feel like it. Um, there are a few other things that we should probably go ahead and do. Um, first off, it says so right here, replace uh, the insert file name here with an appropriate file name. So I'm going to go in. Now, um, this is going to be running on your server, so even you're sitting here on your box, um, you're connected through your SMS. Think about where you want those trace files to go on the server. Uh, in my particular case, my server is my box, so I'm going to go ahead and stick with D SQL, um, and I'm going to be not at all descriptive and say file one, or um, let's just say trace file. We'll get a little descriptive. There's a nine zero eight thirty for the date. Now it'll append. Um, Oh, where did it go? I swear it said it will append. Oh, there we go. The trace extension will be appended to the file name, so you don't have to put that on there. Um, let's look at a couple of other things. Now, that's not what I'm looking for. Now, here's uh, an older um, 
a, a different trace file I had already set up and I, I brought this up for my reference I'm going to copy this and move it on over because this um, exec doesn't contain all the options I want it to now it's easy enough to go in here and by the way little tip if you're not familiar you can highlight a, a, an SP or what have you all kinds of different keywords and hit F1 to get that and help that's pretty basic and I know a lot of you are rolling your eyes but you know you never know who might have missed that um, but yeah it's always helpful to go in and take a look at BOL and see okay I've got uh, SP trace create and see what the different um, things you can do with that are uh, we can see that the way it was scripted out we got a trace ID uh, output okay great and an option value of zero let's scroll down and find out what that means well um, no options clearly but what we wanted from before we told it we wanted a rollover and I like to have it shut down on error so um, in this case uh, if you want both of those then you would specify six you know two and four so we're gonna change this um, let's see is that actually options at yeah I like to do the at options equals six again make your script nice and clear uh, let's go back over here and say trace file um, and trace file equals and we already set that good uh, max file size uh, is up here and we set that to 20 and that's in megabytes I believe let's double check just to be sure yeah megabytes and stop time we already set up here as tomorrow morning at 1 1 a.m. okay now okay and this is the one I copied over so we want to get rid of it <laughs> we don't want two of those oh wait file count that's why I copied it over here to remind myself of things I want to limit the number of files it's gonna keep um, to say 10 why not now the way that's gonna work if you do have uh, a, a really a, a lot of activity that's being um, traced and it reaches the tenth file it's not gonna stop the trace at that point it'll keep on tracing it'll roll over into a new file and delete uh, the oldest one you have for this trace you understand so if you start off with um, trace file 2009.08.30 and then it goes underscore two underscore three all the way up to underscore what nine then it goes to underscore ten it's gonna delete your first one the trace file 2009 0830 okay so we've made our modifications to that uh, you can go down here and all these exec SP trace events are adding those options um, that you wanted so like our SP batch complete and our deadlock graph and you can go in there if you want to the SP trace events um, and and look at what each one of these is that can be really helpful where is it yeah see here you go let's find just for fun let's figure out where our graph is graph is 148 oh, look at that 148 you can go and find out what all these are because at some point you may want to use this again but comment out you know say I don't want SP batch completed um, uh, and then leave them back in anyway moving on down trace ID 1 that's what actually starts your trace so you know you could you know um, do that if you're if you're afraid <laughs> if this is a production system and and you don't want to um, accidentally run a trace then keep it like that and then when you're ready go through and uncomment it uh, one of the things I like to add uh, so that you don't have before you even get started it's a really good idea to add your stop um, commands down at the bottom of the script because you don't want to have to suddenly stop it for some reason oh my gosh something wonky is happening and and production is now slowed to a crawl and have to go digging around for that stop command um, so get your set uh, SP set status trace steps hella, I can't talk SP trace set status um, trace ID equal to two. Uh, sorry, I had to pause and put the dog up, so I'm not sure where I left off, but basically um, your trace set status uh, status is equal to zero, stops the trace, and then if you actually just want to clear it off of the server altogether, because the record stays out there until you clear it, um, you'll want to run status equals to two. Uh, this trace ID, by the way, will show up when you run this, and, you know, since we're talking about it, let's go ahead and run it. Jump back up to the top, make sure we got everything, yeah, sure. 
I'm connected. And okay, let's run it. It's thinking. It's thinking. Uh, don't freeze up. Ha! <laughs> Did I hit debug? <laughs> uh, okay. Hang on. Okay, let's see what I did wrong here. Oh, yeah. I started off adding um, the actual names to everything, so I need to finish that. Uh, parameter names, I should say. Let's make sure. Let's go over here and take a look. Okay. Options, trace file, max file size, stop time, and file count. Okay, so it is exactly what it is. Oops. <laughs> I had that right the first time. Okay, shall we try this again and this time without the debug option? Okay, so we got a trace ID back of two. Um, you'll go down here and make sure that your trace ID is two in your end commands and um, let your let your trace run for as long as it wants. You can stop it manually or you can wait for your stop time to roll around. Me, um, Let's see. Uh, let's do a couple of. Well, let's use a different window. Let's be nice, smart about this, shall we? Uh, so use midnight DBA. I've got nothing else going on right now, so I'm just going to run a couple of real quick. Mm. Okay, great. All right, uh, I feel like ending my trace now. So let's jump down to the bottom here and run our stop command. All right, and let's go take a look and see if we have, um, what did we say we were going to call the, the output file? Let's copy that out right. Oh, pfft. Maybe I should try doing these things during the day. Trace file. The reason it came up error, by the way, if I skipped over that, is as I tried to open up the file without the trc dot trc that was appended. Okay, so yeah, you go find your trace file on the server and access is denied. Okay, that was kind of weird. Even though I'm an admin on my own back on my own box, I had to go in and uh, add myself specifically um, in the security for that file to have full access. So. That's okay. We got it up. We got it going. Hey, look at that. And we can go in and now see all the joyous and wonderful things that we did in our trace. That's um that's pretty much it for setting up a server side trace file. Um uh I'll try and uh get a couple art articles that quantify better how much better and wonderful or running server side traces is than running it through the client side, but you know, you can pretty much take our word for it. It's it's a smaller footprint, puts a lot less load on the server, and um it's just it's just cool. It's something you can know and your friends won't know and you can show off. So that's all I got. Oh well, category completion. Uh, I'm a little bit OCD about this. I like to go ahead and clear the trace off of the server, but that's just me. Okay, now that's all I got.